All right, so today I just wanna talk about how I'm coming up with the layout for this space and how we chose the tile for the space. So I think that a lot of people choose tile with the limiting factor of the size of the room and not the other way around where like you can, now that they're making tiles very large, you can almost customize any space and make the tile fit the space. Don't think in terms of the size of the tile that you need to have that full tile. You can make a custom design by cutting down those tiles to fit the space. So here we have a room, it's 60 inches wide. And basically we chose a 12 by 48 inch tile so that we can custom fit the tiles to the space like this. So the floor is, we split it in half and we have one grout joint running through the middle of the room here. We have it covered so you can't see. And then this same grout joint is going to follow all the way up the wall. And it's going to be about 30 inch tiles on the left and the right, and then for the back wall. And then over here, we're going to just run the tile the full length of the wall to the end. So there will be no vertical grout joints on the left and the shower head wall. There will only be one vertical grout joint that will run from the back wall all the way down through the curb here and then obviously on the floor and then everything else is going to be a horizontal grout joint. So there's not going to be any uneven tiles. You're going to get perfect symmetry on the back wall, perfect symmetry on the two side walls. It's going to be a really awesome look. And so how did we pick our layout to figure out how many tiles we're doing? I always like to set a ledger board and really it all depends on the flow of the project, but this one we're going to set a ledger board again and um, we're going to start on the walls first. So basically all I did was take the full measurement of the wall from the lowest point of the pan and then take it all the way to the ceiling because that's where we're tiling to. And that gave me 119 and a quarter was this side here to the ceiling. This other side is 118 and a half. So we're not going to base our measurements off that. We want to get the biggest space. So 119 and a quarter. And we know that the tile is 11 and three quarters. So I take that down to decimals, which is 11.750. And I know we're going to be using a 16th spacer. So we're going to add the 11 and a quarter and the 16th spacer together, which gives you 11.8125. This is rough because obviously we need space for expansion on the bottom and the top. So you're roughly going to be out about a quarter of an inch because we want an eighth at the bottom and an eighth at the ceiling. But this is just for rough measurements and, and reference. So that gave us 11.125, which equates to 11 and 13 sixteenths in fractions or um, inches. Now, because of this, right, 11 and 13 sixteenths, we divide that by 119 and a quarter, and that gave us, let me pull this up again. So 119 point two five zero divided by 11.8125, that gave us 10 and an eighth. So that means from that lowest point to the ceiling, we're gonna have 10 full tiles and an eighth of a tile. That would leave us with a sliver. We don't want that. So your next option is to now split the difference. You wanna have maybe half at the bottom, half at the top. Again, always thinking of being symmetrical. You don't wanna have a sliver at the bottom and then a four inch piece at the top. So all we did was we just did half a tile. Chris just moved my laser. Half a tile. Which is five and seven eighths. So then we just went back and did our calculations. We did 119 and a quarter. So now we know it can't be 10 full tiles. We did 119 and a quarter minus nine full tiles, and then we also subtracted five and seven eighths. And that left us with about seven inches. So we know we're gonna have about the seven inch piece at the ceiling. So that's good. Um, so we can throw our ledger board up at about six inches and we'll have pretty much even cuts on the top and the bottom. So that's how we're working that. 
So the last thing I like to do before we start setting tile is go up the ledger board, like I mentioned before. Um, I like to grab a nice straight piece, typically primed MDF um, from Lowe's or Home Depot or your local supply house, wherever you get your lumber from. And then I will screw some pilot holes in where I know the studs are. And then throw on my ledger board and then set my laser. And the next step will be to pull the measurements from the left and the right, just to double check. They're not going to be exactly the same as the floor, like I mentioned how we're matching the ground joints. So you definitely want to go back, double check, and make sure you're grabbing the right measurements before you start production cutting. And then we're going to set the tile and good to go. Um, thanks for watching this video. I hope this helped you and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment, and share this with some of your friends if they need some help. We'll see you later.